Hello everybody, this is Dr. Beter. Today is April 24, 1976, and this is my monthly audio letter number 11. On March 24, 1976, President Ford announced still another effort to treat us as pawns, and this time every man, woman, and child in the United States is intended to be involved. I refer, of course, to the trumped-up swine influenza threat and a proposal to inoculate everyone against it. The stated medical reasons for this totally unprecedented project are so patently flimsy that everyone from the World Health Organization to individual doctors all around the country have sharply questioned what is proposed. Many doctors have gone so far as to openly ask what the real political reason for it is. So unconvincing is the medical basis for it. Meanwhile, the Rockefeller-controlled major media are beating the drums in favor of it. Some groups have questioned whether perhaps something sinister is to be added to the vaccine. But while this could be done, it is not the underlying reason for the swine flu program. The whole swine flu swindle is an elaborate cover-up the most diabolical so far are the truth about the horrible CIA radioactive plutonium superpoison which is now contaminating the entire southeastern portion of the United States and is even beginning to show up now in traces nationwide. This is the poison which was stored in the central core vault of the Bullion Depository at Fort Knox as I first revealed in my monthly audio letter No. 5, October 1975. As part of the Federal Government's cover-up, they made matters a thousand times worse when they deliberately dumped it into underground streams under Fort Knox during January, as I have previously reported. Now they are beginning to realize the hideous extent of their folly but instead of honest remedial action, their response is still cover-up. First, the swine flu campaign began by alarming everyone with its alleged threat. Then it was pointed out that even those who do get the vaccine run a considerable risk of getting sick anyway due to side effects. And to cap it off, officials expressed public doubt by the end of March that it would be possible to produce and administer enough vaccine to inoculate everyone by late this year when the government allegedly fears a swine flu epidemic. The whole thing is intended to condition us all to the idea that this will be the cause if and when Americans start dying like flies in some area soon due to poisoning from the spreading CIA plutonium poison from Fort Knox. And just for good measure, preposterous stories have also found their way into print recently, alleging in effect that plutonium is practically harmless. Based on records which have suddenly been discovered recently about people who were injected experimentally with plutonium years ago. It's all a big game of look over there, and you, your children, and your loved ones are the pawns in this cold-blooded game. Hello, my friends. This is Dr. Veter. Today is October 26, 1976, and this is my monthly audio letter number 17. Topic number two. On October 5, 1976, just as the so-called swine flu inoculation program was getting underway, but other things probably seemed even more worrisome. For example, er elderly people began dying of heart attacks shortly after taking swine flu shots, causing widespread alarm at first. But the government quickly assured us that their deaths didn't really matter at all, that they would have died anyway and the swine flu inoculation program went right back into high gear. And then there were the strange outbreaks of an unknown mystery illness at electronics plants in western Pennsylvania, Ohio, and Oregon. 
the employees, most of them women, experienced headaches, nausea, stomach pains, difficulty in breathing, a feeling of being intoxicated in some cases, and even fainting spells. This time the swine flu vaccine could not be the culprit because the victims had not received it. Instead, some were worried that the swine flu itself had struck. Others remembered with a shiver the equally mysterious Legionnaire's disease that had sickened nearly 200 people in Philadelphia and killed more than two dozen of them two months earlier. My friends, there is actually no mystery at all behind these developments, and more like them that you can expect to see. All these cases I have mentioned are man-made and deliberate, but those who are responsible for them are neither telling you about them nor leaving clues that will be found in normal medical investigations of these episodes. We in the United States are now under attack in a campaign of experimental testing of chemical warfare weapons so that they can be employed later on with precision and devastating effect against us in full-scale war. That is, if we let it happen. For years, all the major countries of the world have been in a continuing race against time to discover ever more sophisticated forms of bacterial and chemical weapons, some of them amounting to doomsday weapons capable of destroying all life on this planet. Only madmen would even consider using such weapons, but only madmen deliberately cause wars for their own greedy purposes too, and war is very near at hand right now. Thirty grams of Q fever is sufficient to infect over 150 million people, and it is considered especially convenient since any individuals who are to be saved in such an attack can first be immunized against it. Such selective immunization could easily be done, for example, under the cover of a mass inoculation program like the swine flu program. Q fever, though, is mild by comparison to a new killer gas called AP7, which is being manufactured in Uruguay and Argentina by American and European subsidiaries of Rockefeller-controlled conglomerate corporations. Two thimblefuls, properly distributed, could kill 180 million people and one pound all life on the face of the earth. Before these new weapons can be used with confidence, though, they must be tested, and that testing is going on now as a cover for the periodic episodes of strange illnesses that will occur here and there around the United States. While this testing is going on, the trumped-up swine flu threat was developed. On March 24, 1976, President Ford announced his proposal for the unprecedented nationwide inoculation program, supposedly to fend off the strange swine flu virus. To this very day, not a single case of swine flu has been confirmed anywhere in the United States since President Ford's announcement. 